Hi guys, I am Nitish and I am going to explain today channelization protocols. So let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to point number one, know the various multiple access protocols. Point number two, understand frequency division multiple access, time division multiple access and code division multiple access. So let's start the session with multiple access protocols. Basically, there are three types of multiple access protocol. First one, random access protocol. Second, control access protocol. And third, channelization protocols. And today we are going to look into channelization protocols. Before going ahead, well, let's see what is channelization. Channelization is a multiple access method in which the available bandwidth of a link is shared in terms of time, frequency or through code between different station. Why we need this technique in real time? If there is a common channel and if there are many stations to use that common channel, just like that we cannot send the data on the common channel because it leads to collision. In the random access protocol, any station will randomly send the data at any time. It obviously leads to collision and somehow it was handled in the random access protocol. In the next type of protocol that is a control access protocol, we use reservation kind of schemes or polling kind of techniques or token passing kind of stuff in order to handle the collision. And the last method is channelization, where at this entire channel, the entire channel means the entire bandwidth of the channel is shared in terms of frequency, time or code before going into the frequency. Let's see what is multiplexing. Multiplexing in computer network means multiple signals are combined together, thus travel simultaneously in a shared medium. So if we have multiple signals, it means multiple stations are sending the signal on a common channel. We are going to combine this together in order to make them travel simultaneously in a shared medium. Why do we need multiplexing? Just sharing the bandwidth. When we have a channel, the entire capacity of the channel in terms of bandwidth is going to be divided to multiple stations. So let's see what are the various multiple access methods. The first multiple access technique is FDMA that is frequency division multiple access. Second one is time division multiple uh, time division multiple access TDMA and the last one is code division multiple access CDMA. So we basically have FDMA, TDMA and CDMA. Let's start the session by discussing frequency division multiple access. In FDMA, the available bandwidth of the common channel is divided into bands that are separated by God band. Now, say for example, if we have a common channel, we are not going to just like that send the data where the entire bandwidth is going to be divided into bands. Suppose if there are five stations, then the entire bandwidth is divided into five user bands and these user bands are assigned to each station so that all stations can transmit the data simultaneously. You may ask me a question. What if these two bands are very near? It leads to collision or overlapping. In order to avoid this situation where each user band is separated by some guard band, we will see the diagram now. It will be more clear. So in this example, this is for the entire bandwidth is shared among n station. So we are going to create some n internal channels like channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 up to channel n and we are going to, going to break this entire channel into some user bands that is what this common channel is divided into some bands and each band is assigned to each station so that each station can transmit the data at the same time in order to avoid overlapping of channels. We use a guard band that is the frequency or this space will not be used and this is obviously wasted because we don't want we don't want overlapping of channel. We will see the next point. So the available bandwidth is shared by all station. The FDMA is a data link layer protocol that uses FDM at a physical layer. Of course, about media access control. So FDMA is a data link layer protocol, but actually if the FDM is the technique that is frequency division multiplexing is not is a data layer. It is done only at the physical layer. So FDMA is actually a data link layer protocol, but 
it is used at the physical layer because only in the physical layer the data is transmitted uh, as signals so fdma at physical layer we will see an example of fdma now now suppose if there are four stations station one station two station three station four and each station is generating the data if you observe this is a common channel so we know this is a common channel and this entire bandwidth is now broken into some user bands how many stations are here four so four user bands are created and we also have a guard bond in uh, order to protect it from overlapping from all the four stations data now the data are being transmitted at the same time if you observe this blue color data is from the station one and this yellow color is from the station two and this green color is from the station three and the pink color is from the station four this entire bandwidth is used by all stations simultaneously and this user band is used for station one and the second user band is for station two and the third user band is for station three and the fourth user band is for station four thus multiple stations are transmitting the data at the same time without collision and without overlapping of data now coming to the next technique that is the tdma now time division multiple access where the bandwidth is just one channel it means the entire bandwidth at that particular time is given to one station only so the bandwidth is just one channel that is the time shared between different station so if you have 10 station all 10 station will not send the data at the same time rather each station will be allotted some time and on that time station will transmit let's see now the entire bandwidth is just one channel the next point station share the capacity of the channel in time so we'll see the diagram it will be understandable for us in the previous we discussed about fdma now let's see the tdma diagram see if you observe this time station one is using first time and the second time this time station uh, two is using and at the third time or third second station three is using and at this time station four is using the channel if you observe not all the data are transmitted at the same time in the channel where the time is allotted to every station so that each at each channel will use the entire channel is going to one station and after transmitting that data it will be given to the next station and it will be uh, sure so that tdma is a uh, time shell approach now let's go into the final channelization protocol that is cdma code division multiple access cdma in cdma one channel carries all the transmission simultaneously CDMA differs from FDMA because only one channel occupies the entire bandwidth of the link. It differs from TDMA because all stations can send data simultaneously. There is no time sharing in CDMA. So let's see the example so that it will be more clear to us. So in this example, there are four stations, station 1, station 2, station 3, station 4 as usual. Station 1 is generating D1 data, station 2 is generating D2 data, station 3 is generating D3 data and station 4 is generating D4 data. Now each station will be having a code, say C1 is the code for station 1. Uh, actually uh, what station 1 generates is C1 D1 along with its code. Similarly, station 2 will generate C2 D2 along with its code station 3 c3 d3 same way station 4 generate c4 d4 and when we look at the common channel all data that is d1 c1 plus d2 c2 plus d3 c3 plus d4 c4 all the data are conglomerated and sent as a single data over the channel so here this is multiplexing because when multiple signals are converted into single signal so this is multiplexing no worries the receiver will use the code in order to retrieve its data when we talk about this code actually this codes are based on the coding theory i'm not going into the details of the coding theory and i'm just going to project only two important properties of this code the assigned codes have two properties. If we multiply each other by another, we get zero. If we multiply each code by itself, we get four. That is the number of stations. Let's look at an example. Uh, the data D1, C1 is from station one, D2, C2 is from station two, and D3, C3 is from three, and D4, C4 is from four. If the, everything is multiplied with the code C1, we get the data D1 along with the number.
that number is nothing but the number of stations. So that's it guys. Uh, so the outcomes are as follows. We came to know about the various multiple access protocol and then understand for frequency division multiple access, time division multiple access and core division multiple access. I hope you guys enjoyed this session. Thank you.